Well, today I'm talking to Tim Mattingly with MP Top. I was driving down the Katy Freeway here in Houston, Texas today, and I noticed this huge Romney Ryan sign, which you've seen in the picture here that goes with the story. But uh, huge fly flag, I mean, not a sign, but a fl flag flying up there alongside the American flag. And Tim, I wanted to stop in and find out a little bit about your business here in Houston and why you would uh, put such a, a huge flag out there supporting Governor Romney and, and Paul, Congressman Paul Ryan. Tell us a little bit about your company and what you're doing here in Houston. Well, what we do is we manufacture Teflon-related products. We, are, we machine what we, or what we call high-end machine plastics. We also have a gasket company which we deal in sealing products and that's used primarily in the petrochemical industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we do work for the aerospace field, for the uh, medical field, for the uh, food service fields, and also in the, uh, the uh, petroleum industry. So those are mainly our products. We also have sister companies that my brothers own out here. We're involved in the recycling of Teflon. That's not located here in Houston. It's in another part of Texas. And then uh, we've uh, got another brother with another company, and he deals in what's called flange protector products. They make pipe caps and uh, products that are used to protect pipes and valves that when they're in, in shipment. So what these uh, manufacturers will do is they want to protect the base of those flanges so that they don't get nicked or damaged in the shipping process. So you're basically the, the stereotypical small business here in Texas that's been thriving in spite of what's been going on with the Obama economics across the country. One of the things we talked about earlier is you manufacture the components for uh, op that are used in open heart surgery, basically the heart bypass machine when the surgery is going on. What are the people in the hospital industry telling you will happen with, with that industry? What's going to happen with the Obamacare, you have what's called the iPads iPads, not the iPod that Apple sells, this is the iPad. The, the, the acronym for this is the death panels. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to a, or attended a seminar last week where they, a heart surgeon doctor had just finished a conference up in Washington, D.C. And essentially he was told that he will not be allowed to do uh, uh, neurosurgery without passing the parameters that are set by the iPad uh, uh, administration and what they do is they're going to base the whether or not you get this surgery or open heart could be open heart surgery any kind of surgery it's going to be based on your age and your actuarial life expectancy so in essence what they're going to do is ration health care so if you're an older person who is otherwise very healthy very mentally alert all that kind of thing but you don't fall into the right components of their grid you'll be denied this type of surgery uh, they don't like to use the word deny. Okay. You will not be qualified. You'll be not qualified for it. You won't qualify. Okay, well, we're, we're not going to say yes to you, which means that we're saying no. So uh, that, that's very interesting. Now, as a small business owner here in Texas, how many employees do you have in your business and in your associated businesses across the state? Uh, I've got 20, about approximately 25, and then between my two brothers that are also active with me in related businesses. Between us as a group, we probably have close to, probably close to 100. Mm -hmm. And judging the, the proposals from Governor Romney versus what you've seen from President Obama, which of these candidates, in your opinion, is best for small business and growing and expanding your business and employing more people? Well, we've got a 20 by 30 foot flag in front of our business with Romney Ryan on it, and that pretty much states uh, where we are as far as the election is concerned. And that's because, uh, as a small business owner, you're concerned about the future under President Obama. Well, I think it's a matter of, of you want some certainty, and I need it. One of the problems with Barack Obama right now is he's not, he's, he, he is he is tearing apart the Republicans and the Democrats and playing them off against each other. And that's not the best way to run a government. We need certainty. We need to know what the taxes are going to be. We need to know what the regulations are going to be. And right now they're just 
they're pouring on as much as they can. Mm -hmm. We did have a business we were involved in uh, uh, the Gulf of Mexico and a nuts and bolts business, and we closed that business basically the day that uh, Barack Obama announced the moratorium on drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. We closed that. We closed and liquidated that business the next day. And despite the Supreme Court ruling that them shutting that down was illegal, they came back and put another moratorium in which basically shut down production in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, you, you may remember that what Barack Obama did is he, he lifted the moratorium, mm -hmm. but they've only issued one drilling permit for the Gulf of Mexico, and that was in a very shallow well. So effectively, the moratorium is still on. Although, from a, a, a publicist standpoint, or for the, as far as public information is concerned, the, the moratorium has technically been lifted. Now, I understand that you had some problems with one of our favorite agencies in the federal government, the Internal Revenue Service, um, where you had been properly paying your taxes, unemployment taxes, through the state of Texas, and they refused to recognize the fact that you had been paying that. What, do, what kind of impact does that burdensome regulation and having to prove your innocence rather than them having to prove your guilt play on you, and how did you get that resolved? Well, the, it, was a, it was a situation of unpaid federal unemployment tax, or what's referred to the acronym as FUTA. And the way that tax works is you pay uh, a portion of it to the state of Texas into the state unemployment fund, and then another portion of that goes to the federal fund. Well, the more you pay the state, the less you pay the feds. If you pay less the state, you pay more the feds. So it's a balancing game of one to the other. Um, the problem that we had was the feds came back to us and said that we had not paid the state of Texas. Well, we got the certification statements from the state of Texas, the comptroller's office signed with, with her signature on them, and uh, uh, that we had paid the tax and we submitted all this to the IRS. Uh, I had, and this dragged on for a period of years. They were basically uh, said that we had, uh, we had not paid $42,000 in taxes and they were going to collect the taxes. Eventually they reached the point to where they were going to levy our account. And uh, I went over to Culberson's office and I, I've said this on the radio before and I say this to anybody that listens to this, if you ever have trouble with the IRS, uh, let me correct myself, not if you have trouble with the IRS, but when you have trouble with the IRS. The first thing you need to do is contact your congressman and work through your congressman's office because at that point, if, if, as long as it's you versus the feds, the feds are going to win. If you can get your congressman involved, then there's three different parties involved. I've got, I've got you as the individual or the company, I've got the IRS, which is basically the executive branch of the federal government, and then I've got your congressman, who is the legislative branch of the government. And I've told the IRS if they want to meet with us or have a meeting, I want to have it over in my congressman's office. Well, they always back off from that because they know that there's another player involved in the game and that other player is another arm of the government. So people need to think about that whenever they uh, 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 get involved in, in, a, in a dispute with the IRS. I estimate that for us, and this dragged on for a period of two years, that we spent probably $25,000 worth of staff time in uh, fighting the IRS on this issue. Yeah. That, that's just amazing. And, and you were right all along and had proved that you were right, but they just refused to acknowledge what was going on. You eventually had to turn to the Attorney General's office in Texas and get Greg Abbott to help you out with that as well. Well, actually, we didn't turn to him. What happened was the Attorney General's office uh, they, they keep track of this stuff up in Austin on what's going on with unreported taxes because their, their approach is, well, if they didn't get the taxes, then they need to be aware of it. And one of, the, one of the lawyers up in the Attorney General's office realized that there was a trend developing where the IRS was going after these companies in Texas, but these companies had paid these taxes because the state of Texas has their own records that, that show that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Greg Abbott's office, they uh, uh, pursued a case against the feds on this. And, I think that issue is resolved. I under, I've often said that the Obama administration has been at war with Texas almost since the day they walked into office. Do you find that to be the case? I think they hate Texas. I think Texas is not, Texas is probably the most outspoken of all the 50 states and they don't like that because we are not, we are not falling in line like most of the other states are doing. If you compare us to California, they really don't, don't go after California because California is, is essentially a democratic state. And, they, uh, they're comfortable with it. And their efforts have directly impacted high-paying, non-unionized jobs here in Texas and, and cut back a lot of those. 
Mr. Mattingly, we thank you very much for your support of Governor Romney's campaign and for trying to help stimulate the excitement and getting people out to vote. Polls are crowded. There's lots of people out there, so we urge you to get out and join them and, and vote the Republican ticket. And thank you very much Bob, for the work thank you do. You. Your, your service as an Army veteran. You are a gentleman. Thank you.